Hello and welcome all to this 30th webinar series. As we start this meeting, I thought while nature is reawakening, humanity is facing one of the darkest periods in living memory. COVID-19 COVID is causing tragic loss of life and the measures needed to fight it have turned our world upside down, affecting billions of people and stopping economies in the tracks. This is a crisis like no other. We anticipate the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. While there is tremendous uncertainty around the forecast, the global growth fell to negative percent this year. And we predict a partial recovery this year. That is our baseline scenario. We also know that despite the extraordinary uncertainty, we can chart a path forward. An entrepreneur ecosystem can make all its members stronger and more resilient. The COVID-19 pandemic has underscored just how true this can be. As small businesses that are members of ecosystems have been able to pivot quickly and creatively in response to the new business landscape. ABN has been organizing webinars successfully for the past eight months to try practical ideas for new growth and the companies in the network immediately set to work developing new plans. In these times of economic hardship and concerns about personal health and safety, now is the time when the true value of AABM has come into play. The ecosystem they created meant that they all had immediate access to more resources and support than they would have on their own, which opened opportunities for creative solutions to the new problem. Leadership emerged from almost all quarter. Given the speed with which we have seen entrepreneurs and their communities doing this, is in response to the current pandemic, we are confident that many of our entrepreneurs will be able to not only build resiliency, but also restore and identify new opportunities for growth. Amidst the global pandemic, business across industries, including the manufacturing sectors, have had to deal with uncertainties and disruptions. Some manufacturers have seen reduced demand and others are increasing, shifting or relocating production to meet demand or manufacture new products. Less noticed and discussed, however, the impact of the pandemic on entrepreneurial business. While a large number of startups have suffered during the pandemic, COVID-19 has also led to an increase in entrepreneurial activity. Companies and individuals across the world have rallied to respond to and where possible tackle this crisis. There has been a surge in creativity. People and companies, <clears throat> people and companies have, have devised new ideas to respond to existing or emerging needs insufficiently addressed by governments and incumbent institutions. The picture of how entrepreneurs and the systems have been affected is more nuanced than we might at first believe, but understanding it is important how it's being shaped, reshaped, will have long lasting effects. One area of growth interest lies in adoption of industry four to increase manufacturing and production, production flexibility and to address supply chain challenges. However, the pace of adoption is uneven across companies. Lack of clear vision, strategy, and a system, systematic roadmap are the biggest challenges hindering industry four adoption. Well, most of us are seeking answers to questions such as what is industry four? How can industry four benefit my company, where should I start, what are my gaps today, and what are the opportunities tomorrow? To help our entrepreneurs get started on, the, on their industry for transformation, Dr. Arbagam will help our entrepreneurs to identify which aspects we must address to harness the full potential of a transition. It will take a good part of today if I must run through all the achievements of this illustrious speaker, who is the managing director and CEO of Broadland Technologies Private Limited, which prides itself on value creation for business and individuals connected to the business. Dr. Arbagam believes in making positive impacts, spurring performance for leaders, teams, small entrepreneurs, and large business. At the juncture we find ourselves in today, thanks to the pandemic, there can be no more, no one more fitting than Dr. Arbagam to address, enlighten, and take questions from the diverse group on potential opportunities for entrepreneurs in Industry 4. Dr. Arbagam holds a master's degree in electrical engineering from IIT Madras and multiple doctorates from Toronto University in Artificial Intelligence and supply chain management from Madras University and also holds a bachelor, uh, bachelor, uh, master's degree in business administration. With 3.5 decades of solid experience in leadership roles, his mission over the decades has been to enable, empower, and elevate businesses. His resume reached like a vision. IBM, HP, SAP, Xerox, and as an independent director in Tamil Nadu, Newsprint Limited. 
Dr. Arumagam has crisscrossed the globe as a professional speaker and participated in interactive sessions covering a range of topics that include artificial intelligence and robotics applications, cybersecurity, industrial four, health, SCM, and e-governance. Has been the visiting professor in several universities outside India, formerly adjunct professor of supply chain at MIT, Spain, visiting professor of neural systems and robotics, Center for Robotics and Neuroscience, Plymouth University, UK, visiting professor of technologies, Highland Universities, Inverness, Scotland, UK. Among the plethora of awards and recognition he has won, I would like to mention he was awarded the prestigious Indian Prime Minister's e-governance award for successful innovation in the year 2K. Prestigious IEEE award USA for outstanding innovation in public drug distribution model developed and implemented in Asia and African countries. From this resume, you sure did understand that this achiever would stop for nothing less than the sky. Yes, reach for the skies is the vibe he spreads through his talks as well. So I'm not going to make you wait longer. We'll let Dr. Arbungam take over and negate you with his astute experiences and fresh ideas. Before I wind up, let me once again extend a very warm welcome to all and reiterate that our AAB and doors are always open to those who might want to strengthen our work with the suggestions. I also wish to place on record our deep commitment to work tirelessly as a team to carry forward our goals in a constructive, gratifying way. Over to you, Dr. Armagam. Thank you, Mr. Gopi. It has been a wonderful introduction. I think it's pretty large. Well, I will uh, take up the presentation right away. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the whole industry world has got a huge paradigm shift, which is from the conventional, we are moving to the industry 4.0. Particularly, the Western world has almost adapted it. So it becomes uh, the uh, kind of uh, uh, the, uh, the mark of today's uh, industrial growth. So now coming to uh, industry 4.0, what is new? Is it internet is new? Internet is about 50 years old. Hope all of you must be aware. It's about 50 years old. It was uh, devised uh, in 1969. It's called ARPNet. And this, this is where the internet has born. Then uh, you think PCs are new. I think it started off in 1981. It's about 40 years plus. And is it web is new? Berners-Lee has opened it up in 1990 and becomes a great hit over the years. It's about 30 years old. You think industrial robot is new? Yeah, no. It's again uh, uh, 59, 60 years old. Uh, they, they have found that Unimat was the first industrial robot. So robot robots are not new. Is it wireless communication new? It's about 23 years old. So it's again already defined. People know about it. Is it artificial intelligence new? It is uh, 1943 they developed neural networks. Incidentally, I did my PhD in 1981. It's already about uh, 31 years over, 32 years. So 3D printing, people talk about 3D printing. 3D printing, uh, the stereolithography came in 1985. It's 35 years old. Is it internet is new? Of things is new, IoT. IoT is already practiced in 1980 by Coke machines at CMEO, Carnegie Mellon, 40 years ago. So all these innovations are already done. Then where are we going to go? <clears throat> so Dr. And what we have innovated in the last 40, 50 years. In the last 40, 50 years, we have done an enormous improvement in terms of various uh, processes. networks. So there is a rapid development which are happening around the world and that's that's a, that's a great point. And if you look at the speed, I think the system speed has increased by about 1000 plus times. And if you're talking about memory, yes, there is a huge increase. It's a 1 million time. So it becomes a global customer friendly because everyone has got a, a smartphone. They can, they can speak anything from anywhere and they can interact with whatever they want to do. Today, much of the business are happening through smartphone. There is no more a laptop. People sit at the airports, give instructions, go through their uh, company's performances and board the flight. By the time they get down, again, they go through. And even now, in flights, Wi-Fi has come. So the whole world is now wired. 
whole world as wide. So what is that we are going to do? That is why uh, I would like to suggest about the sir. Can you make the screen the full screen, sir, Dr. Armagam? What I mean? Can you kindly you yeah make it full screen? I will do that. All right. All right. Yeah, it's coming up now, sir. One moment. Yeah. Excellent. I would like to speak about the evolution of Industry 4.0. When you look at the evolution of Industry 4.0, as uh, early as uh, 17th, 1700s, there is a mechanization of uh, systems have come in. They started developing steam engines. They started uh, creating a lot of mechanical systems. So eight, 1784, to be more exact, they created a loom, which is a mechanical loom. What happens is here, there is a huge amount of people deployed to make fabrics in, 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 in the United States. And it's, it starts moving around the world and the UK has caught up and the whole Western world caught up. But when you look at India in 1700, we were nowhere. We are not in the picture at all. In the second revolution, which was mid 1870, which wherein they have created the first electrical system, electrical motors, electrical uh, electronic systems have been uh, developed. These systems are capable of running the mechanical assemblies. So this was a proud innovation in the second revolution, wherein India is nowhere. The first application of the second revolution was implemented in Cincinnati slaughterhouse. <clears throat> they created a country yeah, they created a sort of you know uh, conveyor system. That system was the first recorded uh, electromechanical device in the world, as, as far as record books are concerned. This is what they talk about. This is in the 19th century. These developments have happened. And coming to the revolution of Industry 3.0, that's what it's about 50 years old. We have got A to Z of uh, electronics what we have today, and all this development has happened. So what's, uh, I mean, a great point about this revolution is your IT and automation control, electronics, mechanical assemblies are all the classical development in this third industrial revolution. During the third industrial revolution is what India slowly had caught up with the world because we had the opportunity to catch the world during the second, third revolution. During this revolution, I think the computers and many of us who are present in this meeting, we are all belongs to this third generation or the third revolution. We were able to have the whole world uh, connected and we were connected because internet came in and all kinds of things come in. So even the third world started to think what they can contribute to the world. So this is a very important revolution where India came. In. Now the fourth revolution, here, this is a digital world. We are moving from a mechanical, electromechanical, IT automation to a total digital world. We are started moving into a twin uh, technology. We call a cyberspace as well as we have a physical system. We started to connect these two. So when you talk about Industry 4.0, with the main points were embedded and connected IT interactions with a physical system. So for example, you monitor your, your system, which is running in some 70,000 kilometers away from, I'm mean, sorry, 700,000 kilometers away from a particular instance, you were, you were able to get this data into your internet and you were able to manipulate and you were able to uh, give directions and so on. So IT automation and electronics and mechanical assemblies are being the major tool which is run through the IoT devices. And this is what they call the revolution, fourth revolution. I think unless we caught up with that fourth revolution, we are nowhere in the world. I think this is my, uh, my humble uh, uh, request to entrepreneurs in India. In the next five years, you are going to see a huge paradigm shift. Be ready for that. And so now I wanted to discuss about the disruptions, how this is lead to. First disruption is what the Kodak movement. 
quick moment, which is so widely talked about in those days, you know, when I was in America, Kodak was start dying. A company which was predicted as one of the hundred fortune company, the company that was predicted as a company which never died, such a great uh, net worth and uh, I mean they have everything. But the company died because of uh, you know adaptation to uh, the the technology. In fact, there uh, there is a Kodak movement. People call Kodak movement. Kodak movement is one that. The Kodak uh, picture, what you take and frame it, is that becomes a, 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 a time-tested uh, position for people. So they call it Kodak movement. So this Kodak movement was their driving business entity, but they failed because of non-adaptation of the digital revolution. So this is the first disruption the whole world has witnessed. This is one of the uh, first disruption and the disruption that has given a warning wave to companies around the world that you have to adapt getting into digital, I mean, your uh, technology revolution. Then what happened, <coughs> as early as 1980s, I used to wonder, they used to dig large holes by side of roads and every household, and they dig a huge uh, pit and then they were lying huge, optical fiber cables. I used to wonder what is that they are going to do with the optical fiber cable and how are they going to connect all these households? Where is the pie? I mean, where is the kind of bandwidth to meet so many people? And they did do that. That was the internet revolution. They created the world connected with the proper connectivity of uh, the fiber net. So this was the 90s started and it started in 80s picked up in 90 and today the whole world is connected. That's a huge pipe. There is a, every country is connected under sea cable. So the whole world is now cyber connected and the Wi-Fi capability started moving into the next gen, next uh, disruption. That is the disruption of your Uber. Uber came and made a path breaking change in the business uh, ethics and business uh, strategy for multiple uh, business houses and the world. There are large transport companies, there are large travel companies which are located in different parts of the world. They start to fail uh, in their business once Uber come in. See, Uber started grabbing the bulk of the business from traditional people. They didn't want a vehicle. They didn't want a, uh, even a single car. They didn't want anything. They, don't, they have a system and they don't want a driver. They don't want anything. They just have a system, a centralized web portal, which is loaded into a cloud, and people from different part of the world can have an access to that, and they can order a car. And that is where the third revolution, I mean, the third disruption that created business models, and then about the the IoT and the artificial intelligence. See, this is where the robots started coming in. I think I have something interesting to say about this. See, what happened, the, uh, I, I still have pictures. I have seen in MIT, uh, the Hall of Science, they used to run uh, various uh, pictures and videos of the past development of industries. Mainly they try to show something like, you know, uh, the, the uh, development of uh, the technology over time. I have to see one from Ford. They get huge amount of steel loaded at the Michigan Harbor and it's been taken into their factory. And this is rolled out into cars. It is rolled out into cars. All those parts and assembly, I have seen how effectively they ma managed it. When they were trying to videograph the floor, I see thousands and thousands of men running around doing this and the quality lab was the was the very very huge team of engineers they used to go through every product quality and the each each of these product which comes out this best tools are not really matching to each other so these corrections they largely that did at the product lab the quality lab and <clears throat> that is that is what I have seen in olden days, but after the IoT and artificial intelligence, things are being completely automated. Yeah, steel comes into the factory and gets assembled and it starts throwing out. 
This you can see very well in the case of your uh, Tesla lab. Tesla, the manufacturing speed at nanoseconds, process are being done. I see one man standing and controlling the whole manufacturing setup. <laughs> Such a huge change I did see in the application of IoT and artificial intelligence at the Tesla lab. Then coming to this adaptation curve, adaptation becomes a, a very huge, uh, uh, you know, rapidity as it goes. If you look at the adaptability of technology in the early part of discoveries, like, you know, many of the legacy development, it took about decades to adapt. Today, our uh, IT and uh, other, uh, I mean, our IoT applications, which come into the market and gets adapted within few days. So adaptation becomes very huge. So I must make a point here, the disruption of technology, I think entrepreneurs should have a clear focus as to how you can adapt your technology as rapid as possible, and you can be really live in the uh, in the competition. Otherwise, we slowly move out of the competition. We can't really manage with our legacy systems anymore. We have to create with fast growing adaptability. So the adaptability becomes so very important. Look at the adaptation curve. As I told you, you see the power steering, which was uh, developed in 1951, but it took about three decades, uh, two and a half decades to get properly accepted. Look at the tablet. It zoomed like a, a, a quick curve. It just 2010 and got adapted in 2015. And if you look at the smartphone, it's still shorter, 2012, get adapted to 2016. So what really we were able to understand in short time, technology being adapted. So today there is a clear divide. Companies with technology, companies without technology. The companies with technology adaptation, they are the leaders. The companies which are not adapted to latest technology, they are not anywhere. See, as there are participants from China, they may be knowing the adaptation of AI and uh, this uh, industry 4.0 in China has been so wonderful. And they have implemented every plant and it's so automated the amount of money and time that they spend, the number of entrepreneurs who come forward to build uh, in these technologies are so much and innovation is a mark of the day. In fact, I used to have a colleague by name Kai Fu Lee. He studied with me and he also uh, did the PhD from Carnegie Mellon and I did from Toronto. We are good friends. He moved into uh, uh, the China up uh, this EA application. Today, he's a multi-billionaire. He has created so many applications and he is almost uh, regarded and uh, as the uh, EA guru of uh, China, United States. He only speaks about China and the US. So the adaptability was really matters to China and that's what their great, great development at the moment. So when I look at the uh, industry 4.0 as a technology givers, See, as you look at, there are two things, the operational technology, another is the information technology. What is your operations? Operations mainly your production, inventory, machine, uh, machinery as assets, production systems, host of things comes as operational technology. Information, you have the complete levers of your industry 4.0. Only this convergence, a, a convergence of the operational technology and the information technology makes it complete for today's uh, development. So your industry 4.0 largely on these two getting completely converged. So how are we going to converge? This convergence is what the key for every industry. So the convergence, there are plenty of platforms now introduced. There are platforms by Siemens. Siemens owns about 80% of the such products in the, in the, with them. There are companies which has developed uh, you know, silos of products. I wish at the moment, every entrepreneur or every uh, uh, you know, the business executive or people who are in the technology field should necessarily get exposed to areas like IoT, specialize these areas. 
or cloud computing. See, cloud computing has become, you know, after this Amazon cloud compute cloud, I think people have stopped using buying servers. So, so they are all going in for uh, cloud and they host their data and you have no problem. The data is protected, your software is protected, your operations is protected. So cloud computing is becoming a big thing. And the big data, uh, then the 3D ma manufacturing or the addictive manufacturing, the robotics, augmented reality and cyber security and machine to machine, this is the key. Now what happens earlier, it runs through one process to another processes, there is a human intervention. Today, one process is over that carries to the next process automatically. That becomes machine to machine. So what this technology levers is going to decide would be the future for uh, any industry. I think this adaptation becomes very critical. I am telling you next few years, as you are aware, in the, in the early part of uh, uh, year 2000, I to, I to K, way to K, people were very casual and uh, there is there is a huge opportunity which opens up in America. So many of our Indian engineers went around to serve the whole world. So the whole world will look at India for serving this particular uh, I4.0 I4 uh, knowledgeable individuals as well as small companies which can scale to the international requirements. So, so the international requirements is opening. So this is going to be more than a uh, problem, we must view it as an opportunity. That's what I wanted to personally say. So now if you start looking at uh, what is IoT, I mean, everybody knows what is IoT, but just want to give a, a small uh, flavor. IoT is you have a physical layer and you have uh, a physical system on which you put an uh, uh, internet uh, connectivity and that goes into the um, your internet protocol and gets into the different part of the world where it is being controlled and this is controlled and whatever they want to program on it they will be able to do that so iot has become a, 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 even it's a household no house camera is connected uh, i mean without uh, their mobile being connected to that so it becomes a, a mark when you talk about big data data is so vital so now there are only two things in industries industries which has got data industries as without data the data the kind of industries which has got data they are leaders the industries without data they are lagging behind so data analytics and big data is going to be a great area to work work with then the augmented reality you have got both the mixer reality and augmented reality and virtual reality these are things which are coming now as handy to all industries then of course cyber security there is a huge influence on cyber security people helps establish a secure communication and the protocols to ensure data security so data security has has, has become a huge field to really work around and uh, actually I, when you look at the other side of it your cloud computing your additive manufacturing very recently i must give you an example of what we have done in fact, I was uh, during the pandemic, uh, I just want to convert into an opportunity. So I have a research lab. So my boys, I just told them, why not we make a ventilator? So we took an idea of making a ventilator. So we designed a ventilator and we, we were only using additive printing in manufacturing components because during that time, industries were closed. We are not able to get anything done. So I, I have bought a, a additive manufacturing 3D printer. And I also hired 3D printer services in Bangalore. I was able to get my components properly made and we create a ventilator in record time. What I, I immediately put it on test, I got all the certification. Then I started to improve that. And now we have made it a ventilator, which, is, which can serve for a neonatal baby to a uh, geriatric person. So to that long way, we, we were able to demonstrate in the shortest time because of IT printings. So a lot of your thought, you know, when the moment you think some product, the product should be immediately practiced and the product should immediately come out as a product. Otherwise, people are not going to wait. Today, the waiting time for anything is zero. So let's have to get into IT printing. And talking about robotics, Robotics is a very old theory. It's about 50 years robots are there. What is that more important today is an intelligent robot. 
See, I have a friend. His name is Gairo Becca. He's a professor at my to create a robo-based football ground. I used to go there and watch every time his development. And he had a beautiful robo-based football ground. I did see the robots of his past development, which was where the robots will play, they will try to hit the ball, and if it is hit the post, it will just go to the, uh, the line and wait for the uh, next instruction. Namely, they will roll the ball and start again. But today, he created a robot which makes a fault hit, and it fell on the ground like a player, and he showed the face in close-up. I saw the expression start changing. So it is adapting what human beings are all about. And as in China, they have created a huge amount of such applications. So that is something which is going to be the additions. So this is going to be the paradigm shift. I want to take a, a small uh, presentation about the power of analytics. I have a good friend by name, Erin Bagoma. She's uh, part of the MIT uh, team. Uh, which does a uh, large work of uh, data analytics. And she took this work with the United Nations with her, uh, you know, uh, permission on trying to face this, you know. She took a lot of projects which we never think about it. And she took it about how the food is being wasted. See, food is being wasted at production. She said about 500 metric tons of food is being wasted at the production. And post-harvest, she says 350 metric tons and processing is 160 and retail 200 and consumption is 340. All put together, 1.2 trillion tons of food is being wasted, which is about 30 to 40% of what is being created. But if you look at the kind of situation in the world, we have, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, malnutrition and people have uh, very less food. All that is amounts to only 30, 30%. But you waste 35% to 40% in your food production. She is able to do that. This is done on only industry 4.0. She used IoT device on every basket which is moved out of the production. And every the proposed harvest system, she used IoT device. And she collected rapid data. And the data which she collected, which is as huge as billion, uh, it's, 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 it's about several gigabyte of data from each of this. And she had a special processor to process, crunch it, and she used the ML and everything and brought out a report. This has become a, a very key indicator for UN. And how are we going to do that? How many of us, how many of our engineering graduates how many of our industry would like to take up such projects, which is having a huge uh, impact in the sense you not only make money, but it will also create a huge employment. This is, this is certainly going to be the thing. So this is where big data, the data uh, analytics really plays into the, uh, the world. So uh, to give a little more uh, uh, thing about IoT, IoT is on everyday things. You have got IoT is in car, car keychain, and you, you have an IoT on the shoes. I think already many shoes have got an IoT device, which is connected to your mobile phone. You have your purse, you have your mobile, you have got your screen, everywhere you have got. Then you have got wireless network, again, an IoT device, then embedded mobile, then your vehicle, even pits, which should not go stray. So you connect an IoT device. And people who have got an issue, uh, I mean, uh, generally they go through a depression and all that, they have an IoT carry. And agriculture automation is completely agree. See, now we created as many as three products for agriculture. We created a product which can save the agriculture production for more than 30 days. What this normal farmer who plug the, uh, uh, the tomatoes and go to the market, if it's not sold, they drop and come back. Today, the same potatoes, they can store it and they protect it for 30 days. No air conditioning, right? There's no air conditioning. We created a yeah, LED-based system, and that has been now working in about five, six points, and it's going to go through. So agriculture automation. 
on energy consumption and of course security cameras and everywhere you talk about uh, telemedicine is largely on iot so iot is one area a huge opportunity for us to really build uh, systems in the last five years as i told you earlier there is a huge change which you are going to face i think it's on the rapid development the whole industry will be automated so now question of see the kind of rapidity i have seen adapting technology as you as i told you already see the curve the adaptation curve is going very fast so the technology adaptation is going to be imminent and it's going to be very fast so getting into that you should have your industry automated completely so i think we must start building our indian industry more automated and um, and there is a, there is a huge automation drive is also there a lot of uh, dedicated funds are being uh, spent on innovations and things like that i don't think any of them are trying to have an access to such funds i think it is very important you must know try to tie up with uh, large organizations and try to get on to such development there is a big need for people with smart factory see now what happens this is where the opportunity for the young engineers there is a huge requirement i need a lot of people to recruit i don't get the kind of quality people all of them carry a degree but they don't carry a, the qualification for the uh, work adaptation so when i look at the hierarchy it starts from it starts from field level to enterprise resource planning so this is the, without an enterprise resource planning uh, if you run an industry the industry is not concerned you know complete it will be working on silos of operation so you need to have a total connect like plant management process control but beyond everything an enterprise resource plan is so very important i had in the morning i was talking to one of your alumni has built a, a enterprise resource planning himself which is a great innovation i think such adaptation is so very important like people need to get connected to it. have this adaptation very fast in their own industry which means a lot of uh, thing once it is done then the smart manufacturing architecture is adaptable now the human and robots are connected that's why i brought this picture the human ai interface is now on i think uh, those who have visited germany know everything is automated everything is being carried out by the robots human beings need to get connected to the robots so the question of how we connect to that you know you have got uh, you got to be really get on to the basics of robotics and start applying it in multiple ways one of the recent application which was which we have i mean uh, we are part of it and uh, the out offshoot company it's a fantastic uh, application what happens is uh, the hospital Uh, you have got uh, uh, entry you have got uh, people who can walk in and they get into their doctors or their room once they come in uh, first time they have to stand before the robot robot will welcome and just grab all his data you give a sheet of data that gets scanned and robot reads everything and is aware of you then subsequently patient when he goes he knows past history and picks up the past history and push down the doctor and it it says you have to go to the room number 3 and you have to wait uh, uh, the the seats which are close to that and it gives the location for them the patient starts moving and the the advantage of it i have seen in written the advantage of this it demonstrated in written and they have adapted in multiple clinics particularly during the this in help a great deal so what i personally feel i think uh, robo adaptation is becoming mandated you know now there are many people who try to say india is a large country we have got a huge amount of people why are you trying to push a robo into that may lose the it may it may tend to make the people lose job but i must tell you something it is it is mandated today the whole world is going to operate on a robo based and the industry 4.0 you can't have such a distinction at all you must adapt otherwise you are not in the global race we are we are we move out of that so we have to necessarily push us into adaptation of this and reengineering talent pool when i look at india has got 44 only 44 lakh vocational training capacity india has got only 0.8% of the requirements we are being 
Look at USA, they make 6.7. Look at China, 11.5. Look at the other part of the world in terms of percentage of families club. India is much lower. We have number of engineering colleges are more. The uh, talent pool, young, uh, you know, uh, yeah, look at Korea and India. Korea got 96%. They are fully automated. Korea, if you walk into anything, they are fully automated. So that is the beauty of Korea. So that's what is happening. Whereas uh, if you look at India, we are much below. So this is one thing which we have to necessarily got to go through. So now skills required, you have to have digital knowledge. This is the basic. Without digital knowledge and the ability with data management, one cannot be a successful entry to any large industry. So the industry entry is largely depends on the knowledge of your work with data. Of course, the ability, see engineers who can have the ability of automated system and uh, computer science uh, uh, graduates with the mechanical uh, bent, they can go in for AR, VR and machine, machine learning, big data analytics and so on. I don't see many companies from India who, who has a larger potential to meet international companies. Very recently, my friend from Bharat Spence wants some help on AR, VR. I, I was trying to locate, I don't see many people. I don't see many people have got a decent profile. So what happens, I'm not able to really do. I have to go back to a company in Korea. So my personal feeling is here they have a problem, Koreans, they got to uh, convert all what want to say in Korea to English, Korean to English, and so much of language barrier. Indians have no such barriers, but unfortunately, your skill sets are not quite good. Uh, and there is another thing which I wanted to match is your functional expertise. You must have the cross-functional expertise to really adapt to, uh, I mean, uh, technology. But these two has to connect. That is where the success of 4.0 is going. So if people got the cross-functional expertise, like uh, working under ambi ambiguous and changing environment, and focus on their needs. So all these guys should be able to manage digitally with others. So the learning of digital becomes so vital for all of them. Unless they know the digital, they will not be able to service these clients. If I look at the entrepreneurship, see person who, I mean, entrepreneurs are born. They are, I would always say entrepreneurs are born. It's out of real desire to make something different. They move into entrepreneurship. So the sectors where the, 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 the entrepreneurs have got a huge uh, thing is today, the whole uh, industry landscape, they are going, applying AR, VR for assets creation. They wanted to have like, you know, huge assets of AR, VR. Even Hyundai was talking about it. They want to create a huge asset of AR, VR. <coughs> Sorry. So the success of micro small industries will determine the success of our nation. So huge <coughs> opportunity is opening for export substitutes. So export substitutes have become so vital for today's, you know, industry, uh, this thing, you know, if you look at the, <coughs> if you look at the kind of defense, you know, they have created clusters. I'm going to speak about it a little later. So that needs <coughs> huge entrepreneur and executives. And these are guys going to come in and do whatever the best that they can. Get out of there. Thank you. So the success of micro and small industries will determine the success of your nation. So huge opportunity is opening up for export and substitutes, which are now making a huge headway. So the entrepreneurs has to really apply themselves to really the emerging field.
This is a recent news from Defense Ministry. They have about 1.75 lakhs crores of uh, you know, equipments which are going to be manufactured within India. So they create defense cluster. <coughs> and this defense cluster is largely focused in Tamil Nadu and the UP. UP and Tamil Nadu are the two places where defense cluster is going to be very rapid. And of course, Bangalore is also included. These defense clusters all along has been only for large industries. Now they have created SMEs. They, they call it SME clusters. They want people who have got the experience, knowledge, and uh, the kind of exposure, they can open up their SME within the cluster. It's like a hub and spokes model. I think here is a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs who are in the mechanical field. So those who have got uh, significant experience and uh, uh, working in uh, uh, in SME can open their shop. I think there, there is a ROI of 30% in this. I think this is a model India has copied from Turkey. Turkey adapted this about 10 years ago. Today, Turkey is the largest exporter of arms and ammunition. India imports about 5 lakh crores of uh, in, uh, arms and ammunition from all over the world. So now our Prime Minister and the Cabinet has taken a serious view that we must make. Here is a huge opportunity. But for this opportunity to exist and to compete, you all must have necessary experience on Industry 4.0. This is the factory I visited personally. You see, the, it is fast, it's quite flexible and efficient and high quality. This whole thing runs, runs by few individuals sit in their operation room and the entire uh, assembly line goes at a huge speed. All they have to do is, morning they have to come, set the number of cars to be produced or number of electronic assembly to be made. That they press and give the specification, rest of it will move at such a rapid pace. So it is fast and quite flexible. You can keep changing your product variants. It's not necessarily you want to have the same and if you keep changing it. And the efficiency in terms of this, it is, it is about it works 90, 90 plus percentile. Whereas the efficiency of what we work here is about 60 to 70%. So we have, a, this is so beautifully made and the entire, uh, the quality drop, you know, it's, it's absolute 100. It's just a shade below 100. Such a quality assembly happens. What happened? Everything is happening. It's machine speaks to another machine and the production goes. And Germany has adapted industry 4.0, more than 80% of their industries. And they are going close to 100 now. China is adapting at a very fast pace. America has already gone in a big way. Western world has done. A country like India, who depends on the whole globe on uh, industrialization, we need to really adapt at a very faster pace. So this is something, you know, which will be a, yeah, an eye opener for us to really adapt to the world speed. Now, talking about the process flow, uh, you connect the, what happened. There are a lot of uh, products which I have mentioned. This industrial protocol drivers and industry uh, to uh, application thinking model, uh, application thing model, and industrial protocol drivers, device cloud connector. These are all which used for connectivity. Whatever you are connecting from one process to another process, this connect is very important. Then analyze, you know, there is a huge amount of products that are being used for analysis. See, whatever process we do, whatever systems that runs, we need an analysis so that we know whether we are on the dot and we are having any issues. So based on that, we will be able to implement a UI builder and put onto a web, uh, web uh, drivers and visual application. Of course, the runtime services runs, uh, takes care of the whole process. So implementation, see that's, you know, as I told you earlier, there is this is a twin uh, uh, engine, you know, you have to have a physical system and you have got a, uh, I mean, uh, process driven by uh, 4.0. These two gets connected and implemented and managing the whole thing, uh, everything behind is by a team of people. So the, the, the experience, what you get out of it, you know, uh, to leverage uh, various uh, uh, animations and 
data of experience creations and everything is done across. So these are the process flows that really runs your enterprise architecture. So unless you have this interconnected and monitored and the data flows are properly maintained, your whole system is not going to be very, very effective. I have seen many, many people have implemented industry 4.0, but the success runs only when it is implemented with a proper process flow. So this is the well-defined process flow, which they always have activated. See, now look at this car. <clears throat> this car, now you see there is no driver, driverless car. This is an electronic vehicle, you know. You see the number of uh, products that runs into that. Uh, there is a CAD, there is a, a 3D simulation, there is an application uh, life cycle management, uh, then ALM is, you are all aware of it. <clears throat> then the PCB design, then the engineering and data management. This part <clears throat> is one particular, uh, you know, base on which they have done the harness design manufacturing, PCB design manufacturing and functional behavior capture. I think this is exactly they adapted in Tesla car factory. They have gone, their shares, I mean, their value has gone skyrocketing because of their total adaptation of the systems. They have completely adapted everything. Then there is a thermal analysis, functional behavior picture. See, entire product has been switched into defining the, uh, the, the development of this EV. It's not simply we can manage and manufacture an EV. It's not just getting a, getting this car assembly, putting our batteries and we can run. We cannot do that as a, as a whole. We have to do it with a tremendous amount of uh, product uh, information. I think we don't have many people who got trained in mentor. We don't have enough of people on semi-center. We don't have people on uh, uh, Polarian. We don't have NXCAD. So there is a huge requirement which is being produced from all these companies. I think India is going to manufacture largely electronic vehicles, which is going to be the paradigm shift. So my request to all the young entrepreneurs, be watchful. Try to learn things across. If there is a, a money to be spent, please spend it worth spending this money. I must tell you my little experience. I was an electrical engineer. While doing that, I was going for a computer training classes for digital equipment corporations, VAX, VMS, which was not in my syllabus, but I went out to learn. My advantage is when I got a recruited in Larson and Tupac, from Larson and Tupac, directly digital recruited me. See, because I know this digital VAX, the fundamentals far better than many of them, many of my peers. They recruited me with high pay, I moved off to America. So the opportunity opens up only when you get exposed to technology. So the technology today, I have just broke down, broken down. I have uh, called various products, which are going to be very, very powerful. And we are trying to apply these things and create a center, and you will be able to offer services to various manufacturers. This is what is happening. You know, every company, TCS has built a huge uh, I, I 4.0 center in the US, and it is all manned by our guys. And they are all half trained, and there's a lot of issues which is they're facing. If you have a proper center of excellence and learning opportunity, you get into that without much issues at all. The same way, this is the digital twins. This is what I have been talking about. The digital twins are the physical system and your uh, uh, the system which is on uh, on the floor. You have NXCAD, uh, then Team Center and Technomatrix and Portal, etc., etc. These are all digital uh, platforms. You connect your smart factory automation. You build the CNC technology. You do the assembly automation. You do the warehouse automation. You do the robotics technology. You do the material handling technology. Quality inspection. All these are the uh, the digital twins. This is the physical system and this is the software. So these two gets married and smart factory automation is possible. I have a small uh, 3D printing, you know, you know what happens in, uh, in, uh, in the... Uh, this is what happened in China. It may look like they built happened. this building. It may look 
look like an average home. I hope you can get a little closer and you'll see the multiple layers that created this 3D printed villa. It's part of a display in Eastern Finesse showing the latest feats in innovative construction and includes this five-story apartment building, thought to be the tallest 3D printed building in the world. So you see that we trend through the design of the house we want to the printing machine and then the ink is layer. This 1,100 square meter building, for instance, which has three floors, it took us one day per floor. Record speed that's made possible by a giant 3D printing machine, measuring 105 feet long and 21 feet tall. Instead of ink, the printer squirts out a paste made from recycled waste materials. With larger homes like this villa costing about $161,000 to produce, many are saying it could be a game changer for the construction industry, particularly in countries like China that are facing rapid urbanization. I think this technology is going to change the way buildings are built. It's going to be attractive to all income brackets, lower income brackets. They'll get something that is cheap and quick, or something they can be proud of, something that looks really nice. And for like the, for the upper Income bracket, it's gonna give you really complex and fancy looking structures that, that they would really like. The development company says it already has 10 orders for the villa and 20,000 orders for smaller houses from the Egyptian government. huge potential in India. Today, we are going to build millions of houses for the, uh, you know, poor, poor. And this project is already on the cards. I think uh, these houses need to be prefabricated. Why not someone can devise something like this in India, which will the problem of building a house in a shorter time. I think this is a technology which is really sweeping in uh, China. Now come to this uh, VR uh, simulations, as you are aware, you know, see, I just give you an example. Uh, there's an um, uh, aircraft which is uh, supplying foods in Africa, and uh, it's, it's a helicopter. And the helicopter lands in a, uh, uh, lands in a particular city. And uh, what happens, uh, it has got a mechanical failure. Now, that is where the simulation, VR, uh, MR, and AR really applied in solving it. Look at this uh, guy who sits uh, on top of a um, crane. He is not viewing anything else. He has to go through his VR uh, glasses. I think that the Google has introduced that the VR glasses on a small smartphone. After that, there are many youngsters have become a VR experts in India. But how far they apply, how far they learn, how far they really make it to reality, it's a big question. Of course, there are plenty of startups have come in IIT research lab and so on. <clears throat> so how much they are coming to this field is a big question. But again, this particular area, is going in a big way. I think India adaptation is phenomenal. He sits on top of the crane, this glass, and he's able to operate the rest of the tools so precisely. And he, and, and he does everything because the instruction comes within the class. Look at another experience. This, uh, this assembly system, there is a fault. They can go through with a VR, uh, you know, they will be able to understand what are the inner components so precisely? While the component is on work, while the motor is on work, they were able to view how the revolution is happening. Whether there is a small deviation, they were able to see through this. And above all, there is a recent application, one of the youngsters in the US has developed, which is not a great one, but it's a very, very vital one. Uh, a VR glass, you will be able to know, see in every corporate house, there are plenty of uh, lines of electrical and uh, your AC lines, uh, your fire lines and all passing through, but this will have a thick, uh, you know, ceiling and uh, and below that people used to work. And if there is a fault, how do we find out? There is no way to really open up everything and try to locate. This is what we are doing at the moment. But with this VR theory, if he wears it and see up, up, he will be able to locate which pipe is leaky. So he can put a small hole, go in and correct it. So this particular application has attracted very widely for investment in the year. I think these are the uh, startups the young entrepreneurs can think of and which has, which has got a lot of value for India. <clears throat>
now you can have a look at this see how this is where i said you now if uh, um helicopter is failing in one point i mean which is about 70 80000 uh, i mean some 8 9000 uh, nautical miles away from your uh, center and uh, you got a service this is the way we do it and you don't need any great person to do that any person with a very simple knowledge of opening and removing and replacing will be able to handle it well so this is the augmented reality bosch has developed for the car service this service this gentleman is not a service engineer per se he doesn't know service at all but he is able to see it on his uh, vr uh, and he is able to view where the problem is just have to change it so this way things becomes easy western world people number of people who are coming into kind of uh, service and other things are very less so they were able to do this this is a live training they are able to give the training across for anyone uh, it's a so simple if you buy a mobile motorbike you will be given all the training and with the vr glass anywhere any part of the world if you have a problem you wear your vr glass and you get the idea and you can service and take it forward <clears throat> so the world is becoming uh, quite application oriented See, I don't have my time, so maybe. And finally, I would like to uh, put. Uh, this is again a uh, first uh, one of the robotic. Uh, uh, I mean, robots they created, and later this is being used for mathematical games also. This lady is the first human robot was uh, developed and used through an android. and later this is being adapted in uh, multiple games also and uh, see she functions as a normal human being so this is one of those uh, great uh, development in robotics and i think i will finish my lecture i think i have i have taken more than the time allotted and i would love to have your questions uh, and i think uh, we can go through on our session thank you thank you thank you so much uh, dr arimugam for this wonderful presentation a lot of uh, people have been giving feedbacks offline and uh, through the chat link uh, i quickly request uh, our member elmaren to take the questions and uh, interact with dr arimugam and we can also open up the mics in the meantime i also request uh, Mr. Arimugam from Sundram Fastens, China, being an end user from his perspective, uh, Arimugam, if you would like to kindly share your views, uh, kindly unmute and. My apologies for uh, in between. I have made a disruption. I mean, I have disrupted the discussion because of a little personal issue. Sorry about it. Not at all, sir. Not at all. <clears throat> Arimugam, can you please unmute? Yeah, yeah. It, it was a nice presentation, uh, doctor. I would say that uh, uh, definitely. And uh, we have also implemented uh, some of the things uh, uh, in a very very startup condition in our Sundaram Fastness China. And uh, we would like to take uh, more inputs from you. Probably uh, we can have a separate call uh, uh, with my team uh, along with you. Uh, right. so that uh, for a better understanding and what way we can penetrate into more uh, activities like uh, uh, real time uh, so today one of the major problem as you mentioned here is uh, the skill uh, 
the skill is a, the people skill is a very very major problem and other thing and uh, uh, we are finding it very difficult to find a very skilled people so uh, we would like to take more support from you uh, probably through your contacts or through your team and other thing and we are ready to work jointly with you and with your team and other thing uh, for the any new developments also if you are really interested in uh, taking this further uh, personally i am very much interested in uh, supporting uh, indian companies to really build their uh, thing in fact uh, we are also uh, working with the government to establish an uh, eoe a coe center of excellence for 4.0 which is on the cards i think once uh, after the elections definitely i think uh, the country i mean the state will start uh, enabling a center which will be probably i will be part of the center then once the center is developed i think you can have an easy access you can do the access from remote as well so you can be part of this and you can build a lot of research and development activities through that this is one option which is locally going to happen at the moment if you want any support maybe i can tie up tie you up with uh, siemens uh, uh, center where i will try to get your uh, things done and <clears throat> regarding your uh, research queries you can opt it across to me and i will give my uh, email id and my other coordinates to mr tarik and mr gopi you can connect it from them and if you send out a mail i will be able to give you a proper response as to how we can really take take the way forward sure uh, thanks for this uh, support on the thing and uh... And definitely we would like to uh, yeah. have an association with you yeah sure it will be my pleasure yeah. always have uh, good to have an association with tarumal <laughs> that's the name sake yes <laughs> yes sir. yes sir. thank you eril can you take up uh, the question sir eril eril maran can you please unmute So yeah. uh, that's a wonderful presentation, sir. I really learned a lot, actually. Thank you. Your video is off. So now we go for question and session, sir. Yeah, please. I'm waiting for that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Thomas Sagar asked, "Are you on chemicals, sir?" so export oriented sub uh, situations please elaborate sir he is asking about uh, sub situations yeah substitutions for exports i have already told you the defense let's say we are importing as you just about 5 lakh crore of defense uh, uh, equipment from international uh, and out of which 1.75 is 100% uh, export i mean imported So 1.75 lakh of lakh crores, which is uh, as huge, which is a very huge money uh, in terms of uh, numbers. So these things now, like in the lines of Turkey, India is also taken a call to build uh, defense clusters. <clears throat> I am also involved in uh, the defense clusters in terms of uh, you know uh, putting it in Tamil Nadu. I am always. Uh, Uh, push uh, any project which comes i always uh, go around and campaign for tamil nadu in fact i have brought in multiple projects from lnt to tamil nadu because always i suggest my friends why don't you do it in tamil nadu as you all know tamil nadu is a wonderful state we have the best gdp and we have the best growth index it's it's an outstanding state and we have got a plenty of energy and uh, uh, developmental skills so having said that this defense corridor is going to open up in tamil nadu so you guys have to be very quick in picking up a, a, a carbon spokes model in the defense corridor build your expertise this is one option the other option is you have uh, lots of uh, international companies look for talents in india it's again a body shopping you know you can have lot of your own team who can build uh, expertise and you can export it to the world so this is the second option so you have plenty of such uh, options which you can uh, put it across for the people of uh, uh, people to have uh, uh, you can create 
your own first thing is you should start an initiative moving on to this area of consulting and start building up expertise around that okay good thank you sir and uh, mr natajan asking so uh, nowadays we are uh, hearing about industry 5.0 so can we uh, explain is, is it there 5.0 is there or what is the future of 5.0 See, 5.0 is, I mean, industry 4.0 officially has announced. Okay, 5.0 is something that we are all focusing on that for the future. That is going to be, this is at least, there will be a mild human intervention. In 5.0, zero human intervention. That's what it is. So, it is going to have the uh, design by its own. All you have to do, you have to only uh, give a, a outline of a particular product or component and it will build from uh, its prototype to production. So this is going to be the next generation, which is we are not much concerned because we at the moment we have not even adapted 4.0. So 4.0 is a big thing and I think we have to build our expertise around that. Okay. Okay. Mr. Sadashiv raised his hand. Sadashiv, sir, we have a question, sir. Sir, unmute one to person, sir. Ah, okay, okay, sir. Uh, Dr. Armoham. Ah. Sir, now please, okay, sir, is it audible? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, we are losing so many lives in uh, Svagasi industrial area, sir. Mm. In match industries <clears throat> and tracker industries, lot of accidents are happening. Uh, why don't you give a suggestion for automation in those industries so that we can save some of the valuable life in uh, Savagasi industries? Sir, your question is always a touch of class. It touches the human life. That's wonderful. Very kind of you. I, I think, uh, the, the, see, the problem is these sectors are quite unorganized sectors. They are not coming forward even for the mild automation. They, so the point, question is only mindset. See, actually the explosive company, what it was in Tamil Nadu, uh, that is almost automated. So automation is very, very primary. In fact, Vimco, they produces matchboxes. It is completely automated. But what they do in Svakasi is more uh, a hut in the, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a small, nascent, tiny industry. So how to build, build this discipline across to them is a big, big question. For the second question, to create an infrastructure, a design for this, I will be able to help you. But how to implement is a big question. I think the, you have to do it with an iron hand. Otherwise, things cannot happen. Sir, actually, they are doing around 5,000 crores per annum turnover, sir. Yeah. Uh, if they have the facility of major port uh, in uh, South India or in uh, Tamil Nadu, they will be exceeding a sale of turnover of 10,000 crores. That is the promise given by the industrial people there. Okay. So the government of Tamil Nadu has to concentrate and uh, people like you, you have to take a note of it and uh, you have to in, uh, improve the conditions in Savagasi to make a, a big jump of another 5,000 crores per annum. Excellent. The plan is really good, sir. We can definitely take it up. I think Sivagasi, I mean, is it close to Tutukudi or it's yes, too sir, far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tutukudi is a near port. Uh, the, the Tutukudi port is one of the very well uh, equipped and uh, uh, robust uh, port in South. I think which can be even compared to many of the ports which we have developed in uh, north part of Tamil Nadu. So that's a wonderful port. So port facility is already exist. But uh, what all I wanted is, I think uh, you can take it as a mission by creating them a, a sort of portal and uh, you put all their products and services and this can be displayed to the world. Yeah, yeah kind of uh, global, I mean, a cloud-based marketing tool you can develop. So that way they will be able to have access to the world. That is one. Number two, automation. Automation, uh, I think uh, you must either insist on all this industry or club these companies to get working uh, one working environment like a hub and spokes model you should build and all of them to house their company there and make use of the existing facility and they should build it so i think that's a good idea maybe uh, uh, personally i can discuss about how we can take it forward 
Okay, sir, I will ask the office bearers of the uh, Craft Manufacturing Association to discuss with you. Hmm. You can suggest, sir. I think you should coordinate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will. Uh, I will coordinate personally, and uh, AABN will also be coordinating. Great. And CP Ravi is one of the uh, top engineer available in uh, Madurai. Okay. We will. I will also uh, come to our rescue. Uh, Ravi is there. Yeah. Thank you, Armam sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Amudan asking, sir. Uh, Mr. Amudan. Uh... Sir, is it possible uh, digital transformation in our country is possible, sir? How, or how long it takes? For the digital transformation has come into our country. Okay. Completely, your uh, um, this Hyundai has gone into digital transformation. Mm. And Port Factory is this digital transformation. I have built a product for quality testing for them. So I have seen their plant and their associates' plants. It's all fully digitally operating all the welding every equipment is digitally driven so already it has come i think uh, the point is uh, it has not been spread so fast that is the only thing i think how we are going to spread it fast is only the adaptation we should not procrastinate we have to take it up very fast. Oh, okay. thank you sir and mr Wellingiri asking why the name cyber physical systems for i 4.0 Cyber physical system is nothing but <coughs> you have physical system. Physical system is what your sensors, all these co called a physical system. Once this physical system connected to internet, internet is called for cyber space, <coughs> then it becomes physical cyber system. Sorry. So it is called a physical cyber system. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> okay. So uh, what all will be the job description role after five years? Mostly company <coughs> is going to have including a government sector. What is the job opportunity for this kind of sector? Sadish asking that. <coughs> Government recruitment will be as it is today. <clears throat> Industry recruitment will be based on only technology. People know technology, people doesn't know technology. <clears throat> that will be their paradigm. So it's te aggressive technology learning should be important to, to students in the college and their work environment. Okay. Go. And uh, Mr. Raghu, want to ask? <clears throat> sir, can you unmute your? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Arun, that was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, the main thing that uh, I would like to know is uh, what are the kind of uh, support infrastructure or ecosystem do we have in India if an SME wants to move on to the I4 uh, domain? So what happens is uh, we hear a lot of this uh, jargon being brought down, like uh, IoT, then you have asset management, then you have uh, artificial intelligence. So many jargons are floating around. And quite really, when you want to adopt it and then take it in real time, we find that we are stuck on many areas. Of course, the internet infrastructure at least now has come up to level and we can uh, have a real uh, uh, benefit because of that. But are there any agencies who help uh, SMEs to get onto this uh, bandwagon of uh, I-4? Well, I-4, that's what I have been working with the government. In fact, the, both uh, our Indian government and the Union government to build a center of excellence, which was almost decided in Tamil Nadu, but for various reasons, it got postponed. I think the once that is built, you yeah. all companies will have an access to all the technology, what I have talked about. So you can carry your uh, idea, come out with a product and take it for manufacturing. So this is what I want to do. I submitted this a plan to the government and they have almost considered, but last minute elections and all were called and some reason it is not taken up. Once it comes to reality, then all you companies will have an access to this technology. Okay, this okay. support, what we can do at the moment, you have got there are many engineering institutes in India. 
have taken it. For example, RC Trichy, regional engineering called Trichrapalli has got a COE, Center of Excellence. People, those who want to have the flavor of technology, they can go into the RC and they can have this exposure. And IIT has done it. So there are few institutions and quickly it will become uh, a sort of uh, freely available in the country of, I mean, within a short period of time. I My vision is to bring one outstanding system for Tamil Nadu, which I already give to Tamil Nadu, but we need it. And now they are working on it. Most likely it will go through. Okay. Thank, oh, you. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> so, Mr. Vatman Laban asking, uh, being the independent director at TNPL, could you please share your experience with the technology upgradation at TNPL, uh, the price quit uh, impressive in the recent times? Well, I think I have suggested to Industry 4.0 as an uh, independent director. It is up to the management to take it up. So they have already automated a very large scale. They have not, I mean, in fact, it is one of the well-running public sector companies in India. Uh, and they have, it's been managed very well. And uh, they have the best uh, talented pool of employees. Now they are adapting uh, fast changes in their technology and industry perspective. I think uh, shortly they will have fully compliant. Maybe in a year or two, they will be fully compliant with the industry 4.0. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ramachandran, can you ask the question? If you want to ask the question, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, go on, sir. <clears throat> thank you, sir. First of all, thank you so much, sir. I really enjoyed the presentation. Thank but the thing is, it was very much on digital subject, which I'm not having much of knowledge on artificial intelligence and uh, digitalization. But my question to you is that, that you talk something about the complete... Uh, food chain wastage from product to delivery, how the, pro the food is going to be, be wasted across the globe. And you said that, that there's something called power analytics, data gathering has been done. And uh, we know how much has been wasted at every stage of uh, its uh, production to delivery. And my question is that since the data has been gathered, I, I couldn't imagine that how such a huge data can be gathered and how best we can do a predictive analytics keeping the data. If, if you're able to do the predictive analytics of data, how we can waste and how we can conception, uh, how to avoid such waste. What is the, what is the decision has been made to do uh, this chain of process to control the food wastage? So I'm not able to connect properly, sir, with the data where you started from the power analytics, then you're talking about uh, data gathering part by one of your colleague, then she has brought some kind of uh, identifying the data part, then what is the final decision? So complete chain I'm, I'm lacking to connect, sir. If that is possible, then we can really do some kind of services <laughs> how best we can save the food and we can offer the food to the people who are really suffering from poverty. That's what I feel that such a kind of data can really help across the globe to avoid poverty. Mr. Ram Sajan, you asked me a very, very long question. Sorry, and sir. That is the way I, I know because I didn't know what, that how what, to, connect what is, is to connect with your... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me connect everything. See, one thing is you are a mechanical engineer. So mechanical engineer, I think you know design very well. So that you are aware of the physical system. You only have to understand the cyber systems. So that's not very difficult. I think best best IT managers are mechanical engineers. So they understand things far better than the electrical engineers and the rest of it. So now coming to your question. See, actually I was trying to give the display of wastages happened in multiple locations. See, analysis is only to throw light on a particular activity. I was trying to explain to you what is data analytics. Data analytics is the gathering of data. How do they gather? They gather through all the different parts of your industry revolution 4.0, namely IoT devices. They have used uh, cloud computing. They have uh, used big data management. They have used uh, cyber interface. And hundreds of things they have done to collect this data. For example, it is, it is going through a geotagging. So we know where this is being wasted, why it is being wasted, whether it is wasted at the production or whether it is wasted at the distribution or it is wasted at use. So multiple data they collected. So now Yaren has collected all this data and she assimilated into a picture along with UN and throw the world. Now it is up to you to think 
what you to do to mitigate this problem. For example, there is a last of a loss of, a loss of 50 million ton at the production. What will you do to reduce it? You can build some new uh, equipment or you can uh, <clears throat> procure it in proper manner, whether uh, you will be able to give them a drying method. I don't know. There are hundreds of methods you cannot have. So basically, analysis is done only to throw the problem. This is the problem. And these are the problem exist. Then it is up to the technologist around the world to build it. So she has opened up the you know eyes of the world. So these are the kind of wastage happens in these are the places, and it is up to them to build essential uh, you know the systems to reduce or increase or uh, clarify or whatever. So it is up to you to build. So for engineers, for example. You are a mechanical engineer. You can build a mechanical system which will reduce the wastage of uh, procurement, or you can build a system which can uh, which will not allow the moisture to enter. So a lot of things. You see, I devised a lot of equipment for agriculture sector. This is separate. I can discuss in length about it. So it is an open call to all of us to build a systems to mitigate this problem. My analysis, my data, the picture I have told is with the data analytics on industry 4.0 you will be able to collect this much of data without that you will not be able to collect the data you can't carry on with the paper and try to collect your uh, information trying to grab and then assimilate into a data and finally make it foolproof she did it various devices that she have adapted that's what i wanted to do example thank you sir thank you so much uh, very nice uh, replies actually answer and uh, Mr. Santukumar asking 93 computer science. So thanks, as you said, IoT automation, big data is adopted in various industries, but it is happening in uh, silos. So example, the food waste data can be utilized by waste to energy industry. Is this collaboration happening? I can think of other, uh, uh, like other cities like traffic transport, like this kind of uh, sectors is possible to implement. See, I tell you something. This is where the mind has to crack. He has cranked his mind. He has really brought an idea as to how we can go to the next step. This is where we need ideas. This is where startups are born. So let him think an idea. Let him create adequate nuances to that idea, build into a product and just bring it to the market. This is what the startup initiative is all about. So I have only explained about food chain. There is another one they have done. This is about, uh, this is called, uh, you know, uh, uh, sewer bot, sewer bot. Sewerage, they drop a robot that goes into the sewerage gut and it finds where are the uh, glogging. Which house throws solid waste into the uh, drainage system? All that it can find out. So that those houses can be worn and they can be, they can be disconnected or they can be taken action. So you can do it. So innovation ranges a huge area, which can be your own social environment and your uh, regular life and your profession, your uh, finance. You have got A to Z, hundreds of areas. So my question, my thing is, somebody throws the data, then it's up to you to grab the data and try to convert into a yeah, working model. That's what is startup and that's what is the parent, I mean, uh, today's uh, technology revolution. Yeah, thank you, sir. And Mr. Sindhul Kumar. Uh, Hello. Sir? Yeah, yeah, ask Just the question. Time. Yeah, uh, good morning, myself, Sindhil Kumar from Gujarat, Jamnagar. So it's a nice presentation. I have a query uh, regarding the uh, embracement of technology and uh, uh, concern about the employment. Uh, India is a highly uh, populated country and uh, embracing technology is inevitable. We have to embrace the technology. When Once when you go for embracement of technology, there's another side effect is that uh, retrenchments, the joblessness. How we are going to tackle this, and what's your advice on this? In Germany, after the I mean, after the adaptation of Industry 4.0, there are 500,000 people have lost their job. 500,000 people have lost their job. Who lost the job? If you go, go look at it very closely, fellows who are packing. 
fellows who are trying to use uh, you know uh, you know filling people see all this means will get erased so henceforth industry 4.0 only trying to say you are not going to use your human being for an uh, redundant and useless work you use your human being only for the adaptive and intelligent work that is the change of thing so we there is never go everyone has to adapt their life more intelligently to survive the whole platform so the job loss will be replaced by job creation but one day if somebody is a packer he should know how to work on an uh, a sort of automated warehouse he should know how to do that how to operate various systems if he learns it he gets a job in a different manner so the job profile may change but certainly job loss will be there people who are uh, very redundant and not fully aware of what is technology is all about so we need to update ourselves to meet the trending change correct thank you, thank you thank you thank you so much sir uh, sir i have a personal question because i am in robotics business past 11 years so we are do lot of welding automation welding robotics we are selling uh, india and uae uh, and other european companies also so when we start the business robotics business i am here about actually people were very diligent there than i if almost after covid couple we get the good business but i have a question means how much is possible to invest investment in the robotics la oh is invest pandra alavukku tier 1 tier 2 or tier 3 la supply is not ready for investments how would uh, happen for uh, the growth in a population wise robots pathina india oda conception romba kammi da ninga nobody inga vandu ungalku manufacturers kadai adhu get from europe or japan robotics support varaiku generally but if you compare to china 1 lakh plus robots per year avanga purchase pandranga is it possible and the 1 lakh uh, 50000 robots yearly purchase pandra alukku india oda growth aagradhukku வெரிஸ்ட் <laughs> the application of robots <coughs> more precisely not just the physical robot you must you must qualify yourself more on building the application on robots you must do, go into the if uh, not the physical system you must get into the cyber system you should be able to write programs you should be able to write applications for the robot then you are you are business will be very robust and it will definitely take off well so for investment you should make path breaking change you should do path breaking change number 3 you should start discussing with the defense corridor it is time you should start talking to them i think you are already in the robo field you should get into the defense corridor and you should start grabbing your business from them yeah thank you sir thank you so much thank you talik sir we want to ask the questions sir yes i, I so dr armagam uh, it has been a very wonderful presentation the key take away is the disruption adaptation and convergence tomorrow as you mentioned in your presentation we are the company who have been doing uh, from india our own enterprise resource planning solution erp solution and lot of business process solutions also we have been doing going along the way we also realized that we need to adapt to new technologies we cannot be having legacy systems so we And today 85 to 90% of our customers we have hosted the application on the cloud and managing the data and uh, because of abn we do have associations with people like ariel maran balaji logunathan who are all in the you know iot and analytics space automation space we are all now collaborating together also and participating we would like to have a separate session with you understand and probably take you on board as our consultant also sir if you do not mind first of all let me congratulate you because it's not easy to build a erp 
hats off to you you built an erp which is not simple i think somebody in india who has made it which is something that we have to be very proud of and uh, i think uh, you yourself has got a very huge opportunity now i think you must closely look at the different sector where all you can implement your erp and that is one now having developed an erp i think you should start building iot applications plenty of iot applications you should bring and then you must also move into embedded systems so now you have to build these systems and make your erp suit is much more robust in in with your own uh, axillaries see many of the erp works separately axillaries comes from someone so instead of marrying these two you yourself can integrate this erp and the uh, embedded systems so now i think it's time you have to progress i would love to definitely support any time and you can call me i think now we have exchanged our numbers also any time you call i will even invite you for a dinner one of these days we can sit down and plan and whatever my best effort i can definitely tell you and i also get you introduced to a lot of my friends overseas where you can talk to them and build i, I must see that your erp should go around the world i used to work with bond bond made me one of their advisors in their uh, in their uh, board i was an advisor for bond you must be knowing bond is one of the largest yes. erp one upon yes. a time and he went with americans americans have completely screwed him up so i work with him so i can definitely work with you as well yeah sure, sir. Thank, thank you thank you very much appreciate yeah, sir. because we have been building some amount of iots also for our customers one plastic injection oh, wonderful company for their assembly line tracking we have done some solution we will come and discuss yes, everything with you sir Yeah, sure. I will give you some rapid development ideas. If you are interested, you can definitely take. Sure. I think in the defense uh, corridor, you should take a hub and spokes okay. and start thinking how you can build it around. Sure. Sometimes you may be become a large integrator also. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, as a final question, sir, Mr. Dhanasekar from AT1 Chemical, sir, go on, sir. Yeah. Uh, it was an excellent presentation. Uh, doctor uh, can you explain on this export oriented substitution which you mentioned see that's what see what happens the i was talking about one particular point is your defense defense nearly about 5 lakh crores of imports are happening out of which you lack and 75000 crore of uh, equipments are being to 100% exported so now our prime minister based on turkey's uh, the policy we are also going to manufacture large amount of uh, defense equipments in in india they have chosen three places one is tamil nadu another is up and thirdly is uh, bangalore so you have a huge opportunity going to exports uh, i mean open up here so this will be totally on import substitution while think talking about it you can also do a lot of export of manpower you are you are qualified people on maintenance of this iot device and industry 4.0 is greatly needed for the world around so that is one more thing which you can think of particularly on the maintenance area these two will be a catching point at the moment this is the, i have only touched upon uh, defense there are multiple areas which we may discuss on a later date yeah. so thank you doctor thank you doctor thank you thank, okay. you. thank uh, you so much it was a pleasure meeting all of you Thank you sir